Praise the Lord. We're so glad you chose to join with us tonight. This is Pastor Randy Richardson with the Bible Heritage Pentecostal Holiness Church in Waycross, Georgia. Welcome. We're going to sing a song that says, Love lifted me when nothing else could help. There are times when you've done everything you can do. You've called on everybody you know. Everybody has let you down. And things have not gone your way. But God's love can lift you out of the miry clay and set your feet on the rock to stay. I was singing.
there's another song that was written by a man by the name of uh, Layman, Lehman, Layman, something like that. And uh, he uh, wrote this song entitled The Love of God. And it says, the love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. As he wrote these first two verses, he actually copied them from the wall of an insane asylum. A gentleman that had been in there who probably was of Jewish heritage heard this poem that was written probably around 1000 uh, A.D. Uh, that uh, was written for the Jews to celebrate on the Shabbat. And um, so uh, he wrote these words and, and Brother Lehman, Lehman took these words and wrote this song and then his daughter penned the, the third verse uh, that we'll sing here in just a moment. But the love of God, oh love of God, how rich and pure, how measureless and strong. It shall forevermore endure the saints and angels Hallelujah. Oh. Stand set up there to record the sermon portion. If you have your Bibles, turn to 1 John chapter 4, 1 John 4, beginning in verse number 7. We're going to go through verse 10 tonight. And some of these uh, things are a little bit of a repeat, but uh, I want to focus mainly on the love of God, the love of God. 
Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. He who does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this the love of God was manifested toward us, that God sent his only begotten son into the world that he might live through him. In this is love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation or the payment for our sins. God is love. When you think about love in the United States of America, 90% of what people think is love is lust. They love the way she looks. They love the way he looks. They love the way she dresses. They love the way he dresses. They love her hair. They love his uh, uh, job, his money, his position, his, his sense of humor. All of these things we attach to love. A lot of people attach uh, sex to love. But we're talking about love that transcends all of the things that we could ever attach to this definition of love. Love is maybe when you've lived with the same person for 60, 70 years, you look across the table at them, they don't have their teeth anymore, they don't have much hair anymore, and yet you love them dearly. Hallelujah. The definition of love is an intense feeling of deep affection. Babies come into this world loving their mothers and fathers. They feel the parents' hearts with so much love, intense, deep affection, fondness and tenderness and warmth, intimacy, attachment and endearment. I have to admit, I don't think I really comprehended what love is until I had my children. When I held my oldest daughter in my hands and she was just minutes old and, 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 and I'm, I'm realizing that this is a part of me, okay? Well, God the Father feels the same way towards us. We are his children, and he loves us in the same manner, in fact, even deeper than what we could ever love our children. I preached on a subject not too long ago. God is calling us to a new level of love, and God does want us to love our brothers and sisters. But I want to expand on the fact that God is love, and until we comprehend that God God is the basis for love and he is the example for love and he is ultimately everything there is about love, then we can love our brother and sister based off of what we understand about the love of God. We know we were created in the image and the likeness of God. Do you really realize that you were created in the image and likeness of God. The Bible says we were fearfully and wonderfully made. Glory to God. God loves us so much that we look like him. <laughs> That's the first thing when a baby's born. They say, does he look like his mama? Does he look like his daddy? You know, who does he look like in the family? Oh, he's got Aunt So-and-So's eyes. And, oh, he looks like his grandpa, you know. And, and um, I want you to know God does not make any junk. And when God made you, he made you to look like him. Think about it. Let that sink in. When the seed of the woman and the seed of the man come together, and they form a baby, it is not an accident. People can have relations for years and never have a baby. Babies come from God. God gives life. And 
no matter if uh, it's rape, incest, or whatever. I know people say, well, you know, I don't believe in abortion except for incest and rape. Well, I don't believe in abortion under any circumstance. They say for the life of the mother, I've had two situations that I've dealt with in my ministry where the people uh, had the choice between killing the child or letting the mother die, and they chose to believe God, and God allowed the baby and the mother to both live. And so I just choose life in every situation. And I believe that that's what we should do. Hallelujah. You might have been unplanned by your parents. You might have been the product of rape or incest. But I'm here to tell you no matter what the circumstances were, you were created by God. And God says you're fearfully and wonderfully made. You're made in the image of God. And God loves you just the way you are. Praise the Lord. When we're building a house, you sit down and you draw out the blueprints. When you're remodeling a house, you sit down and you create a plan of action of what walls you're going to tear down and how you're going to build it and what materials you're going to use. Well, God Almighty said, I want to build me a child and this is what I want him to look like and it turned out to be you. You say, well, I wish you to done things a little different. I wish you to give me a little more meat here and a little less there and, and on and on. But I'm here to tell you the way you are, God made you for his glory and his pleasure. Hallelujah. He had an image of what you look like in his mind before he ever formed you in your mother's womb. He even took the time to give you fingerprints that don't match any other person on the planet. Because God loves you infinitely just as you are. Praise the Lord. When he says you're fearfully and wonderfully made, fearfully means it's with reverence, honor, and godly awe. And wonderfully means distinct and set apart from the rest. Wonderful. Hallelujah. So let me say it bluntly. You are made in the image of God. God made you and you are wonderful glory. Your mama and your papa may not have wanted you, but God has always wanted you since the time that he created you in your mother's womb. God is the one who gives life. Genesis 2, 7 says, The Lord God formed man of the dust from the ground and breathed nostrils in the breath of life and man became a living soul. Job 33, 4, the Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of the Almighty gives me life. John 1, 3 through 4 says, all things came into being through him, and apart from him, nothing came into being that has come into being. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Deuteronomy 32, 39 says, See now that I, I am he, and there is no God beside me. It is I who put to death and give life. Going back to our text, he says, Beloved, let us love one another, for God, for love is of God. Love comes from heaven. Love comes from the presence of the Lord. It is so natural to love when somebody loves you. You know, when somebody reaches out their arms and wants to hug you and you hug them back, it is so easy to love somebody that immediately wants to love on you. Well, God wants to love on us and he provokes it and he initiates it because he loves us. The Bible is clear that if we love, we know God. And if we don't love, we don't know God. And if there's people that you hate on this planet, you need to get before God Almighty and let God put love in your heart for that person and let them uh, let, let God birth something in you, a compassion for that person. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. There's some people I just don't like. There's some people I don't want to be around. I get just disgusted when I'm around them. 
I was around somebody just last week, and I told my wife, I said, you know, I don't like that fellow. She said, you need to get in your prayer closet. <laughs> she keeps me in check. She said, you need to get in your prayer closet and pray until God puts a love in your heart for that man. I said, I don't hate him. I just don't like him. She said, well, you need to get in your prayer closet. <laughs> you see, we need to let the love of God help us with the people that we have a difficult time with. There are some people that in my own flesh I cannot love, but by his grace and his glory and his touch and his anointing, I can feel the love of God come on me and work through me into the life of somebody that I can't even stand or don't even like. There have been times where the Lord has just broken me and put a compassion in my heart for somebody that I knew had done my family wrong or done my children wrong and, and, and the Spirit of God got a hold of me and said, you've got you to gotta have more compassion for that person. I said, but God, I don't have it. And he said, if you'll seek my face, I'll give you the compassion you need for that person for God is love. When you live through Jesus Christ, life goes so much easier because he helps us with our infirmities. He helps us with our weaknesses. He helps us when we can't love on our own. John 3, 16, I like the fact that it says God so loved. He so loved the world. He didn't just love the world. He so loved the world. You can't find any type of love that surpasses this type of love that God has for you and for me. It's never been like this ever. This is a unique thing and it only comes from God. When you and I give our hearts and lives to Jesus Christ, we repent of our sins and we say, I believe that you were born, that you lived and you died and you rose from the dead and that you're coming back for me, Lord. When I know that, then I can truly know I'm born again. Hallelujah. I'm in him. He's in me. We're in each other. We're together. He fills me with his love, and his love comes out of me. I got some lemons here not too, too long ago. Uh, a, a man uh, sold me a five-gallon bucket for, I think, four or five dollars. And uh, you go to the store and get two of them <laughs> for, uh, you know, quite a bit of money. And I got a whole five-gallon, and they were huge, and and I put them on my juicer, and I mean, we squoze, squoze, if that's a word, squoze, squeeze. We squeeze those lemons, <laughs> we squoze them too, until every drop of that liquid was out of those to make lemonade. And, and I'm here to tell you, when you squeeze an orange, you should get orange juice. When you squeeze a lemon, you should get lemon juice. When you squeeze an olive, you should get olive oil. When you squeeze a Christian, you should find the love of God. When we get under pressure, it should be the greatest opportunity for us to show love. Oh, I don't always pass that test. I, I had a, a situation, even with my doctor, with this foot, with this toe. The doctor told me that uh, he wanted to amputate my big toe, and I'm still waiting. Keep praying for me. I, I was waiting on the doctor, and and so when I left his office, he said, I'm going to call on a prescription, and maybe we can keep it from going up your foot, and, and uh, he said, I don't think it's going to heal it, but I think it might help it and keep it from spreading, and he was pretty adamant. He still thinks he wants to cut it off, but we'll, we'll see. God's, God's got a, a plan, but, but nonetheless, I, I left the office, and I waited about an hour and I looked on the app for Kroger to see if my prescription was done and it was not done. I waited till four o'clock and I know they close at five at the doctor's office. And so I, 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 I looked and it wasn't there. So I called the uh, Kroger and I said, did, did they send it in electronically and it hadn't been processed yet? No, sir, it hasn't reached us yet. Well, now I'm getting a little aggravated because I was at the doctor's office and now it's still not there. So I called the doctor's office and they said, oh, it'll be there, just keep 
keep looking and it'll be there. Well, I looked all till about seven o'clock that night and it was not there. The next morning I called Kroger at nine o'clock and I said, is it come in this morning maybe? And they're like, no, sir, I'm sorry, we don't have it. Well, now I'm really getting upset. I'm getting mad. I, I shouldn't have got mad because all things work together for good to those that love the Lord, to those who are called according to his purpose. I should know that. I should know my Heavenly Father is going to take care of me. I don't have to have an antibiotic. It's nice to have it, and I believe that it'll work and help me. But God is my source. It's not the doctor. But I still was getting in the flesh. I was really getting flesh. And I was thinking, I'm going to go on Google, and I'm going to make some bad comments about their office that they don't follow through. I'm going to have me a meeting with that doctor and I'm going to let him know that his staff either dropped the ball or he dropped the ball. And I'm going to tell him, you talking about cutting my toe off and it going infection going up my foot and you don't even have the decency to call in my prescription. See, I'm getting in the flesh. But what should have happened is when I got under pressure, that's when the love of God should have come out of me more instead of Randy Richardson coming out of me. I should have had the love of God coming out of me. You say, well, how do you do that? Well, the truth of it is, is what proceeds from the mouth comes from the heart. So my heart had some problems. I had to go before the Lord and say, God, forgive me for getting upset about this. I called the doctor's office about four times before I finally got my prescription. Now, by then, I was all lathered up. And when I went back to the doctor, I was going to let him know how dissatisfied I was. But I prayed through before I went there. And I just simply said, Lord, I'm going to leave it in your hands. And when I got there, it was gone. I didn't have that feeling towards him or towards uh, his staff. I, I, I was friendly and, and kind to them and See, if I'd have chewed them out and they saw that I work at Bible Heritage, you know, they would have they would have said, boy, that preacher don't have any love of God in him. He's a hateful son of a gun. <laughs> well, see, that's what we got to be careful about because when we get under the, under the gun and we get squeezed, there should be some love coming out of us. Understanding, patience, kindness, forgiveness. And I'm a work in progress. <laughs> God is still working on that in me. And I hope you'll let him do that in you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Bible is full of scriptural evidence that we should be full of the love of God. 1 John 4, 16, it says, He who abides in love abides in God and God in him. 1 John 2, 5, whoever keeps his word, truly the love of God is perfected in him. Galatians 2, 20, Christ who lives in me and the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. People will be able to recognize you based off the love of God that's in you. They shouldn't look at you and say, well, there's the most fashionable man or woman in Waycross. They shouldn't look at you and say, well, that's the man or woman that drives the nicest car or lives in the fanciest house or has the best decorated uh, house or best um, uh, manu uh, ma uh, manicured yard. There you go. The brain had to let the roller decks run around a little bit. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in 1 John 3, 10, In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested or made known. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. 1 John 4, 20, If someone says, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar, and, and, and he does not love his brother whom he has seen, how can he love God who he has not seen? I've had people through the years that I've had to confront for being prejudiced against African Americans or Hispanic people. And, and I've had to say to them, you hate them. You use derogatory words to describe them. And, and that's a term of hatred. And, and the 
It's not a term of indi- you know that, that you show the love of God. And, and if you can't love your uh, African American brother or your Hispanic brother, then you can't love God. Because the Bible says, how can you love you? You say you can't love a guy you can see, but you love God and you can't see. It makes no sense. First John five three says, for this is the love of God that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. Matthew twenty two thirty seven, Jesus said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. I love the story about the rich young ruler. It's it's got a lot of good nuggets in it that you can pull out in Mark 10 verses 17 through 22. I won't take the time to read it, but it's basically the story where the rich young ruler comes to Jesus and he says, Jesus, I want to follow you. And the Lord says, great, sell all you got and come follow me. And the Bible says in verse 21, Jesus looking at him, loved him, loved and said, one thing you lack, go your way and sell whatever you have and give to the poor and you'll have treasure in heaven. But the man sorrowfully walked away. You see, he wasn't willing to give up his love of money. He said, oh, how I love Jesus as long as I can keep a full pocketbook. <laughs> As long as my wallet is full of money and I'm taken care of and I'm blessed, I'll love you, Lord. But the minute I am poor and having to trust you for every morsel that I eat, then I'm just not willing. I don't want to do it. Well, what's amazing is the verbiage that is used in that text where it says, looking at him, Jesus loved him. Sometimes love has to tell the truth. Sometimes you have to say in love, this is what you lack. This is what you lack that's going to keep you out of heaven. If I see something in your life that's going to keep you out of heaven, and I don't tell you and warn you about it, then I'm not a very good pastor. I need to warn you in love. The Bible teaches us that when we confront a brother or sister, We need to do it in a spirit of meekness, considering ourselves that we might also be tempted. In other words, what if I were in that shoes of that person? How would I feel? So talk in the same direction. I spank my children. I don't do it often, but I do spank my children. And uh, I've got a 34-year-old daughter uh, and and, and on down the line. Uh, Maybe she's 35. Nope, she's 36. Boy, I'm really messed up. This, she'll be 36 this year. 36, yeah. And uh, I've got uh, five kids, and I've got two adopted daughters, so that, that, that gives me seven children, and I've spanked them. And I'm here to tell you, I don't enjoy spanking children. I don't like it. I'd rather ignore it and, and, and move on. But there are times... Because I love them. Last night I pulled Brianna aside and I said, Honey, I watched you today when you were playing with your little friend in the backyard. And I noticed how you pouted and you walked off and stormed off. And I said, That's not a good trait. Now, I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to say to her that she needed to work on her attitude and get it, you know. I didn't yell at her. We, We just, I put my arm around her, loved on her and just told her. She needed to work on her stomping off and, and, and treating her friends like that. And uh, that's the way God does me. He sometimes has to pull me aside and whisper in my ear and tell me that I need to change in this fashion or another. God has done so much for us uh, that we should be uh, obedient to his word. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me just uh, close this message out today by saying God loves us so, so much. And if God loves us, we certainly ought to love other people. I don't deserve the love of God. 
And there's some people that don't deserve your love or my love. But because of the love of God, I should be able to love them as Christ loved me. Will you pray with me now? Father, help me to love as you love. Help me to comprehend how much you love me so I can turn around and share that same grace and mercy and love to the people that I come in contact with, but even the people that annoy me, the people that get on my last nerve, the people that drive me crazy, the people that just do me wrong, the people that hate me. Oh God, I pray in Jesus' name that you help me and, and, and help me to love like you love. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for tuning in today. If you ever need to talk or you ever need uh, just somebody to listen, please give us a call. Uh, call us, text us, what, however you're comfortable. Uh, message us in Facebook, whatever your, whatever your pleasure is, and we will be so glad to help you any way that we can. We love you and you have a blessed rest of your week.